Hello everyone, in this episode, let's learn another feature for this add-on hair shape. Generally, after grooming the guides, you may start adjusting the thickness of hair. In the new hair system, you may add a node to control hair thickness. This add-on also provides advanced functions to adjust the shape of the hair, using a curve to control the thickness and randomize the thickness. Moreover, the add-on provides an interface, making it more convenient to use. Some parameters in the hair shape section are consistent with the parameters of the hair shape in the particle system. Here I will only explain the unique functions of this version. First is Use Shape Curve. After enabling this feature, we can control the shape of the hair through a curve. By default, the hair will disappear when you check this option, which is due to the render engine. To view the effects of Use Shape Curve and Randomize Hair Radius, switch the render engine to Cycles Hair, then press Z and enter Material Preview Mode. The curve's left side represents the hair root, and the right side represents the hair tip. When Use Shape Curve is enabled, the shape, root radius, and tip radius under hair shape will no longer be available. If you want to adjust the overall thickness of the hair, you can use the radius scale below. Now, let's explore the radius scale function. Radius scale supports randomization and controls the thickness via weight and texture. Randomization allows you to achieve varied hair thickness. It provides several parameters, seed, start, and threshold. Start from seed. Different values produce different random results. Start controls the intensity of the random thickness, ranging from zero to one. The larger the value, the smaller the difference in thickness between hairs. When this value is set to one, there is no difference in thickness, while lower values increase the difference in thickness. Threshold determines how much of the hair is affected by random thickness. The default is zero. When set to negative one, all hairs are affected. As the value approaches one, hairs affected will become fewer, with a value of one meaning no hair is affected. Now let's talk about controlling hair thickness using weight and texture. These functions are especially useful when creating hair at the junction with exposed skin. Previously, when creating hair effects, I would make a separate layer for the fine hair on the edges. To ensure a natural transition between the edge hair and the skin, I would adjust the thickness to be finer. Although this approach achieved a good transition between the hair and the skin, the blend of fine and coarse hair was not always smooth and sometimes required two extra layers of hair to manage the transition effectively. Now, we can address this issue using weight or texture. Select the model where the hair grows, switch to weight paint mode, and paint the edge areas with lower intensity. Then, smooth out the weight transition. Blue weights indicate lower intensity and correspond to thinner hair, while red weights indicate higher intensity and thicker hair. After painting, apply this vertex group to the radius scale to create a smooth transition between the edge hair and the thicker hair, making it look more realistic and natural. With this function, you can achieve a nice hair effect with just one layer of hair. Controlling hair thickness with textures works similarly. In textures, black and white values are used. Darker areas correspond to thinner hair, and whiter areas correspond to thicker hair. Since the effect is the same, I won't demonstrate it here. That's all for this episode on the hair shape. See you next time.